Hi, everyone. This is your host, Greg Myers, and this episode is part of our special series focused on diversity and inclusion. In this series, I will be talking with leaders in the payments industry and maybe some experts from outside of the industry about diversity and inclusion. It has been proven that a diverse workforce and diverse management team leads to increased creativity, better decision making, reduced employee turnover, and increased profit, as well as many other benefits that we will be talking about. This special series is brought to you by the WNET and PaySafe. Please join the WNET for more discussions about diversity and inclusion with their Boston chapter on November 17th and their Tampa chapter on November 18th. Everyone is welcome to these free online link-ups. Register at wnetonline.org on their events page. PaySafe is a leading global specialized payments provider. They've been driving innovation in and around payments for over 20 years all over the globe for both businesses and consumers. PaySafe believes diversity and inclusion is not just a checkbox, but rather a journey in which they are fully committed to being on around the world. Learn more at PaySafe.com. I'm honored to be joined on this second episode by Afshan Yazdian. Afshan joined PaySafe as its CEO of U.S. Acquiring in July of 2020, bringing over two decades of leadership experience in payments. In his role, he is charged with bringing to life PaySafe's vision of being the U.S.'s leading payments solution provider. Before joining PaySafe, he was the president of Priority Payment Systems, a Georgia-based payments technology company serving over 174,000 American merchants. Before that, he held the role of president and CEO of New York-based Synergy Data until its merger with PPS in 2014. Earlier in his career, he served as the executive vice president and general counsel of iPayment and was instrumental in the formation of the company, which itself was acquired by PaySafe in 2018. Afshin holds a Bachelor of Business Administration degree from Emory University's Goizeta School in Atlanta and a Juris Doctor Law degree from the University of Miami in Coral Gables, Florida. We've got a great episode ahead, so let's get started. Hi, Afshin. Thank you for being here and welcome to this special series of the Leaders in Payments podcast focused exclusively on diversity and inclusion. Thank you, Greg. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, tell our audience a little bit about yourself, maybe a little bit of your background and your current role today. Great. So I've been in the payments business for about 20 years now. I initially started off as an attorney working on transactions for a company that would eventually sell to a much larger organization. This was in the late 90s, early 2000s, was very infatuated and impressed with what was happening in the payments world. That led me to help start a business called iPayment here in Nashville, Tennessee, which is where I'm still based. I was an executive there for uh, the better part of 10 and a half, almost 11 years. From there, moved on to be the CEO of a company called Synergy Data. It was based in New York City. That was private equity backed. We would eventually merge with a company called Priority, take on their name. And I stayed there as a senior exec for about eight years and have been lucky to join PaySafe here as of July of this year during the COVID times, I like to say. So I've taken on a new role, a great team, but have yet to meet a single person throughout this process. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that's true for a lot of people who are starting new jobs these days. Well, first, let's talk about diversity and inclusion at the 50,000 foot level. What does it mean to you? Like, how do you define diversity and inclusion? So think about sort of somebody with my background. You know, I was born in a different country, moved here as a child. I was about seven years old. And I think I've always been very sensitive to that because I was always a little bit of an outcast. I was always a little bit different than everybody else around me as well. So when I think about diversity, to me, it's more than just cultural, about race and religion. It has everything to do with sort of, there's a socioeconomic impact as well, family makeup, somebody that comes from a home with two parents, for example, has a very different experience and somebody that they may not or somebody that grew up in a household that wasn't exactly middle class or rich may have a different background. So to me, when I think about diversity and inclusion, you think about race, you think about religion, you think about all those kinds of things. But I also look at it from the experience that people have had growing up and their surroundings around them as well. Okay, great. Yeah, I've heard that there's over 50 different 
data points that could be possibly used to define diverse. So I think you're right. It's a lot more than just what I think you standardly read and hear about. So let's talk about PaySafe a little bit and what you guys are doing today from a diversity and inclusion perspective and maybe what's working and how do you know if it's working? Yeah, so I've been incredibly impressed as as somebody that's sort of new to the organization, the amount of emphasis and sort of attention paid to diversity here is just really refreshing. I could tell you coming in that there's a huge commitment from a recruiting perspective to make sure that we do have a diverse slate of candidates so that as we're looking to fill positions, we start there. It's a big part of our hiring process. Obviously, having a diverse group of candidates helps from a hiring perspective as well, as you can imagine. We focused on things like providing equal pay for equal work, not so much focused on somebody's background as more the position that we're hiring for. And as I sort of look at my team in particular, people that I work with on a day-to-day basis, as well as our, our senior management team and then a lot of the other positions, I think there's a huge emphasis to naturally be diverse. And it goes back to this idea that we want to have a diverse group. Our customers that we service are diverse. They come from different parts of the country, for example. They come from different backgrounds. We deal with a lot of small and medium businesses who tend to be also very diverse in their makeup as well. So it's just a natural fit for this organization to continue to hire and make sure that our our staff is also diverse. And that can mean everything from languages they speak or what I said earlier about the socioeconomic backgrounds, where they come from, So there's a great desire. And I think part of it has become a natural sort of part of PaySafe, that it's not, we continue to celebrate diversity and we continue to try to promote it, but it's become part of our fabric. It's part of our everyday as well. So it's been really refreshing for me to to be a part of that. Okay. And how do you know that having very intentional, diverse initiatives, how do you know, or how do you feel like you know that they are working? Well, a couple of ways. When I look at my screens, I would like normally say when I walk through the office, right? But today it's, it's looking at my screens during Microsoft Teams and seeing the diversity firsthand, seeing the different backgrounds, cultural differences, so forth, the people that I see working and the roles that they have. So it's there. I think we also know from as we plan things, whether they're events for the organization, the types of subjects that we want to cover, the types of conversations that we have. Really, you could tell, have an influence by the different diversities in the different cultures that we have within PaySafe. Now, for us as a large organization, we have natural diversity. We have offices, for example, in places like India and then in Europe and places like Sofia, Bulgaria, obviously the UK, here in the US and elsewhere. So there's a natural diversity that we have just because of the location of our offices. But it's so neat to be on a call, for example, with somebody that is from India, that's got a perspective that's very different than the perspective that I have, that's different than the perspective that somebody from Bulgaria has, all sort of addressing the same thing. So, and it's helping shape our business model as we move forward as well, and how we sort of treat our employees and think about what's important to them and what matters to them as well. Great. So we've talked a lot so far about diversity. Let's not forget about the inclusion part. So maybe talk a little bit about your perspective at PaySafe on the inclusion part. There's a couple of things that we've done there at Basics. So we have different networks to make sure that we, we want to make sure everybody feels inclusive. So we have networks of our staff that are focused on, for example, women, Black employees, families, aging, LGBTQ. So we really make sure that everybody feels comfortable and they can be themselves is what I like to say. That's an important thing for me. Again, I go back to my own sort of diverse background and my own culture. I want to make sure that people understand that it's how hard you work and what you bring to the table that matters and being yourself is actually a value add. And it's not something that we want you to hide. So we've done a lot, a lot of our Team building exercises are focused on inclusion, making sure, again, that it's not just about race and culture, but it's also socioeconomic background or the experiences, the varied experiences that a lot of people have had, that they feel inclusive. They feel empowered to speak up and speak their mind. And when they see something that doesn't necessarily work because of their background or their culture, their experience, that we want them to feel very, very comfortable giving us input and allowing us a chance to listen to them and incorporate some of their thought processes within our game plan going forward. 
Okay. And kind of the flip side of what's working, and I'll phrase it as, what do you see are the challenges of trying to implement in such a large organization? You know, what are the challenges that you run into when you try to implement these types of initiatives? Well, the current challenge, I think COVID has been a challenge in and of itself on a variety of fronts. So an action that might make sense for, for example, an employee that lives in Houston may not make a lot of sense for somebody that lives in India, right? Because of just different situations that are out there. I've had a chance, as I said before, to meet my entire team through Microsoft Teams and Zoom and video conferencing. But for a lot of our employees, not being able to sort of be in an office together has made it a little bit difficult. It's one thing to be on a conference call where you've got sort of the business that goes on. It's how do you get past that? What we used to call the water cooler conversations, the ability to, to talk to someone about you know, whether it's something that they may be eating that's a little bit different, that spurs a conversation about diversity and culture or things like that. So the spacing and not being together has had an impact on that, that we've tried to work past as best as we can, but it has made it a little bit difficult in that regard. And then I think you know, making sure that everybody feels like they do have a voice we live in a little bit of an uncertain time. There are some people that still may be timid about sort of being themselves, as I like to say, and, and celebrating diversity about, you know, what makes them diverse, what makes them great. So that can be difficult as well, trying to change the mindset. And again, we have done an incredible job. We've had, you know, I talked about our networks. We have done a really good job of, of on a smaller scale, especially from an executive perspective, getting together with these different groups, letting them know that we do care as an executive, as a CEO of the U.S. Acquiring Division. I'm open. I want to learn about them. I want to understand their backgrounds. I want them to tell me what's working and what's not. How do we improve their situation, whether it's at work or helping them through their home situations? Because people do come from different worlds that I may not fully understand. And so empowering them and giving them the comfort to be able to speak up is not as easy as it sounds. It takes a little bit of work and it takes a little bit of relationship management to get there. Sure, absolutely. Well, you've touched on this next question a little bit, but I, I want to go a little deeper if we can. Can you talk about diversity and inclusion from what I sort of consider the three levels of the company? So the executive level and maybe the the mid kind of manager level and then sort of the new employee slash hiring process. To me, those are three distinct areas of business. And I think it's important people sort of think and understand diversity and inclusion from those three areas. So can you talk about those a little bit? Yeah. So again, PaySafe, very fortunate in the sense that we already have had a lot of focus on this for years. I think the company having sort of been as large as it is, and and as I said, having offices that have significantly different cultures has sort of made it so that it's it's always been top of mind at PaySafe. It's, It's been important. When I look at sort of the executive level and I think about who are my cohorts, I see a lot of diversity, which is refreshing, and it shows up when we have conversations. And again, this goes from both a cultural diversity to sort of their socioeconomic background, or race, or culture, or upbringing, and experience. We really, like, we accept that, right? It's a, it's a huge part of our decisioning process. It's a, it's a big part of how we think about where we want our organization to go, how we want our organization to be perceived to our customers, and as, as well as to our employees and our vendors it's a big part of making sure that we listen as well to the different voices that are there. So from an executive level, it's fully embraced. It's a big part of it. And I think we have a fairly diverse group of people that are sort of in senior level positions here. I think from the hiring process, as I said before, if I can make this a little bit personal about me, I've experienced that. I've seen people take a look at my name, for example, and, and I know that there are certain interviews maybe that I didn't get or I didn't get the same opportunity as somebody else. So I know I'm very sensitive to that. I know that PaySafe in general is very sensitive to that. So first and foremost, it's we're looking for the right candidate. We want to make sure that we have somebody that's right for the role. But most importantly, let's not go in prejudging anybody, right? We want to not sort of just focus only on their experience and only on their educational background or only on who they may know or their networks. We want to be as diverse as possible. So that means that giving everybody a chance to kind of tell us a little bit about themselves, explain to them why they would be the right person for this particular role, and focusing on trying to have as much diversity as we can for all the reasons that I said before, mostly because it's, I think, a smart economic advantage for us to have that diversity here, especially because our customer base is also so diverse. It's a big part of that. 
I think our new employees, as they come in, also become a big part of the diversity that we're trying to espouse. So whether it's our town halls that we have, we talk a lot about diversity. We talk about the different cultures. We celebrate the diversity. We celebrate these cultures. We celebrate the differences that we have within our organization because it is kind of what makes us so unique and so great. And I think it goes back to what I said earlier. It's this approach that we have to try to make everybody feel comfortable coming in, being themselves and not feeling like they have to be their work person and their home person as two different personas, that they can feel like they can come to pay safe and know it's a safe environment, that they don't have to hide their background or their culture. They know that it's being embraced and that they have a voice that we listen to. Great. And I know PaySafe over the last few years has made some pretty big acquisitions. So when that happens, obviously you're bringing a couple of different corporate cultures together. Has that affected positively, negatively the the initiatives that you guys have around diversity and inclusion? Yes, I think I'm actually, you know, I wasn't here for the acquisitions. I'm sort of here helping continue the integration. So there's a lot of collaboration that has to happen between when I say cultures here, I'm talking about more of an office culture rather than a, than a race or diversity culture. But you might have different cultures, different leadership, pre-acquisition. So phase one is to sort of get past that, to make the different people all feel like they're part of the same organization, they're part of the same pay safe, and talk a little bit about culture. Some companies were very, for example, meeting-oriented. Others may be more email-oriented, some in between. Some have lax dress codes, although that doesn't matter today, <laughs> but it did at one point, right? right. Versus others have different perspectives and sort of uh, the feeling that, that you get that, that culture that you have within different offices. So we spent a lot of time on that. Team building is a big component of that for us. So making sure that everybody gets to know each other. For me, especially being new, I've spent a lot of time making sure that not only am I trying to understand, you know, where do you live? What's your role? What do you do for the company? But it's also like, tell me a little bit about yourself. And we sort of encourage everybody to do that. And so naturally, Greg, through that process, as everyone's learning about each other, learning about their roles and responsibilities, as well as their backgrounds, and whether it's a family situation or where they were raised or, or a great story or great meal that they had, naturally, you're starting to get to know people in that way as well. And so that's when I think then you start to see the diversity come out a little bit. That's when you start seeing the culture come out a little bit. You build a bond. There's an inherent respect that's developed as part of this process as well. And we're having a lot of success and and it's been great, but it is a challenge. I mean, look, it's something you have to work towards. It doesn't just naturally happen always. You have to make sure that as executives, that they know that we're accepting of the different cultures, that no one's going in and saying, this is now the way you have to do things. Our culture is that we want to be inclusive, both from a, like I said, a socioeconomic and racial background, but also how businesses and offices operated before the transaction and sort of bring them into the fold, bring them into the family in a way that they feel comfortable as well. Right. So let's talk about the broader payments industry. You've been around it for a few years, so I'm sure you've seen it all. But how do you feel like the payments industry is doing on this topic? Again, I think... It's definitely become more varied culture. I think I think you're seeing it as well. So business has evolved. So when I first got into payments, as crazy as it sounds, you know, the internet <laughs> was kind of new. There's no things as smartphones, cell phones were just kind of coming about. And the majority of people actually did not use electronic payments to pay for things. So if you're paying for your child's school or daycare, if you're picking up your dry cleaner, your intent wasn't necessarily use a credit card or debit card at that time. It was, you know, you typically paid cash for a lot of that. As that has changed and as different types of businesses have started to accept payments today, I think, I can't honestly think of one sector of our economy that doesn't accept some form of electronic payments. So as that's changed a little bit, as the usage of electronic payments has increased, it's naturally created some diversity. It's created a lot of different people coming in. You think again, Look at the United States in particular, and you look at small and medium businesses in particular and and who operates those. It's a pretty vast culture, whether it's because it's an ethnic restaurant or whether it's a business that's owned by a family that may be of a different culture. So that has also sort of began to make its way into the payments industry, whether it's our sales reps that are out because they have culturally, they can define a little bit better within within a certain segment different languages that we have to support now from a customer service perspective. And so I think the industry has shifted along with 
the consumers and the customers that are there as well. I don't know if I would say that from a leadership perspective, there's been as much attention as I wish there was on diversity sort of from an executive level. But I do see that there's a huge stride. I think PaySafe is a leader in that, and I'm proud to be a part of that process. But I do think just like in any other industry and in every company, I think there's there's more work to be done. But I do see it having evolved as an industry that really has started to embrace diversity, has really started to accept inclusion. And I think we're on the right path. And I think we made a lot of progress. Yeah. What more do you think the industry could do? Is there Are there intentional things that maybe, I don't know, fintechs who are, are newer to this industry, or, or maybe it's the, the bigger companies that have been around a long time that need to do more. But what do you think are some things that companies could do or, or as a broader industry that we should or could be doing? Yeah. The same process we used here at Paysafe. So you start with you know, from an opportunity perspective, making sure that when you're hiring and going through that process, that you do try to have a more diverse slate of candidates that, that you start with, right? Give people opportunities, get them in for some interviews. If anything, it gives them an experience to go through for their next time. So like any industry, right? There's a huge culture of networking. So people know somebody, they used to work with somebody and you know that's always going to help. But Can we look a little bit outside of our networks? Can we look a little bit outside of exactly who we know and and provide, at a minimum, diverse slate of candidates from an opportunity perspective? And then that translates into careers. Like, you know, is there a focus to make sure that in certain areas of the business that we do try to have more diversity in our leadership? That's great for the organization. As I said before, I think that's great for a business because of the the wonderful diversity and cultural differences we already see here in the U.S. It's a part of that. But also because, you know, having that diversity also allows new candidates to come on board to feel more accepted as well. So I do think it's naturally happening. I do feel like there could be some more emphasis. And and I think groups like the ETA have done a really good job there. I know that there's women's networking events, events for different cultures and, and socioeconomic backgrounds that are becoming a part of those organizations that I think also help not only bring diversity into payments, but also make sure that those people are starting to get empowered and have positions at executive level roles. Absolutely. Well, Afshin, we've covered a lot of ground on this topic. Is there anything else you'd like to discuss or anything you'd like to leave with the audience? No, I I think, and I appreciate you're doing this. This is such a timely topic. and, And so, as I said, really excited about how PaySafe in particular has been addressing this. I always tell my team, have an open mind. Don't go in prejudging anything. You're always going to get a better perspective of, of life in general, but your business, listening to people with different backgrounds than you. So celebrate differences. Appreciate that somebody's going to have a different opinion from you because of the experiences that they had, because of the background that they have. And, and I think listening and applying those, those lessons and more importantly, giving somebody a voice to feel comfortable enough to speak and explain their rationale for a decision or their issues with a decision because it hasn't been well thought out from a more culturally diverse perspective. I think that's important. We can talk a lot about diversity. We can talk about inclusion, but it's also about making people feel comfortable once they're in those roles and once they're within an organization that they have a voice and that their voice is being listened to. So that's kind of my thing. And and I always leave every interview, every meeting with us, be kind, celebrate the differences and uh, be respectful because I think that's what we need more of in this country right now. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Really, really great advice. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. I I really appreciate your insights on this topic. And thank you again for your time. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. That was Afshin Yazdian, the CEO of U.S. Acquiring at PaySafe in our second episode of our series on diversity and inclusion. The next episode features Liz Pike, the president of Green Rhino Recruitment. Without the support of our sponsors, the WNET and PaySafe, we wouldn't be able to bring you this special series. The WNET, or the Women's Network and Electronic Transactions, is celebrating 15 years of helping women achieve greater personal success, influence, and professional parity in the payments industry. WNET is a not-for-profit organization with a mission of creating a stronger and more diverse industry by empowering and investing in women. Learn how at WNetOnline.org. And PaySafe invites you to learn more about PaySafe, their offerings, international culture, and unique team by visiting PaySafe.com. You can learn more about the entire Diversity and Inclusion series at our website, LeadersInPayments.com. 